Hey, welcome back. This is your first time watching. My name is Matt and this giant pile of machinery all over my shop here at one point was a fully assembled Caterpillar D4 that I found out in the woods and I've taken it apart trying to get it working again. So for this week, I'm going to focus right now on getting the rest of this steering clutch assembly out so I can take that apart and kind of assess what I need to buy for that. And I also need to start focusing on the engine a little bit. So we'll get to the engine later. For now, um, <clears throat> the last part of the, the steering assembly I need to get pulled is I need to take all these bolts off all the way around on both sides and then the whole thing lifts out. So I'm going to go ahead and roll it. I'm going to use my ATV here to roll it out and, uh, and then I'll have to push it back in when I'm done to get all these bolts out. I already almost forgot. I got to take all these bolts off. I have no idea where they go anymore. I'll just take them, throw them in a box and sort through them later. Got to get this off the track so those are going to fly off. Uh, to pull this thing, I'm using going to use my diesel mule here. This thing weighs 2,000 pounds, which I forget what that is in kilograms. It's like seven something, 800, I don't know. Uh, it, it's got four wheel drive. It's pretty strong, so it should be fine. As long as the tires don't spin, it will be okay. So let's give it a shot. Well, I just looked it up and it's uh, 900 kilograms. So there you go. You learn something new every day. I went ahead and marked uh, the end spot here. Basically, it's getting dark later and later here. So I'm gonna pull it out first. And that way I can unbolt it as I push it back in versus if I start unbolting it and pulling it, and then I run the risk of getting it pulled out and it's dark when I'm trying to figure, find bolts and all that kind of stuff. All right, got four wheel drive on, differential locked. had to pull it about a foot the, thanks to the gear ratios on this thing just a foot and these this is just spinning like crazy I think it spun over at least three times so I'm gonna go ahead and start taking the bolts off um, I have a jack a floor jack here underneath the grouser and I can just give this a little pump and off it goes easily so this is a pretty good system I don't need the ATV anymore this will actually not take very long at all by the way, these bolts were already loose when I took the cover off. I have not touched these. They just basically finger tight. Other side. Torque to about uh, 10 foot pounds, it feels like. You know, if I would have changed anything about how I did that, it would be absolutely nothing because that was awesome. It worked really, <laughs> worked really well. A uh, really good idea to pull it for, first and then you can just easily jack it up with the, on the grouser and it'll slide right forward. So now the uh, next thing is, it's, this is all detached. It should pop right out of here. Um, I'm a little bit, I guess this is free spinning. So yeah, this should, I'm just worried about that gear getting caught, but that should just spin as it pulls out. I need to find somewhere to attach a hook to, maybe here. No, nope, that won't work. Nope. Okay, I got these Harbor Freight straps wrapped around the linkage there on each side. They're uh, 6,400 pounds, they're plenty strong. The last step here is uh, I need to just separate this because there's a ridge on the inside of the drum here. I'll sh show you that uh, it needs to clear. So I need to separate this all around. 
and then it should be ready to lift out unless the brake linkage is going to give me problems, which it might. So we'll find out. Okay. Looks like it's not. Let me just hold this in while I'm doing it. making sure the brakes are going to come out properly. Looks like I can turn them, so we should be okay. Uh oh, I think I'm at the, t I'm at the top of my, uh, I'm at the top of my engine hoist. I'm going to have to lower it back down. Okay, take two. Make sure the brakes are still clear. Yeah. They are not. Okay, well there was the, uh, the brake bracket was stuck over on this side. There's a bent pin. I couldn't really film getting it loose because it, it, uh, you couldn't get in there. But basically, I had to just hammer the pin back in on the band. You'll see what I'm talking about in a second here. This thing should just pop right out now. I have enough vertical height here on this hoist, which is going to be close. Oh, yeah. She's out. Okay, well, I got it set down on the ground here. It's just sitting on these two by sixes and it's it's on here pretty pretty solid it's not it's not moving so i am no expert in bulldozer braking science here but i'm gonna go ahead and guess that you don't want grease all over your friction surface like this and this is because the uh, steering clutch compartment was full of grease and water and uh but no big deal we'll get that cleaned off i went in and i priced out all the parts i'm going to need for this that it's really not that bad so um, I, I, there's, a, there's a clutch conversion kit which converts it over to bimetal um, and uh, it's less susceptible to grease because what happens when you get grease and water in these clutch discs is they expand and they just stop working which is what happened on this side. So I'm going to order those but not yet. Um, I ordered the tool to take these springs off. So basically there's a nut here. I'm going to light it over here. So there's a nut here. This is a two and I think it was... I forget, five eighths, and uh, well, actually, there's a there's a nut here which holds a retainer on this nut. Very serious about not making this nut come loose, so that I need to get a socket for this, and then uh, I have to pull this whole drum off of the shaft, and then I bought the tool today that goes over these springs to compress them, so you can take the springs out. These just have little retainers in them, like like valves on a you know, like on an engine, and then uh, then I can rebuild the clutches. I ordered that, well, I ordered the tool, and then I also ordered uh, the seals. There's a seal in here on either side. So I, I ordered those, and then um, I'll probably order, I'll take, I'll take a good look at these brakes, but I'll probably just order the relining kit for these things. So there's some uh, rivets that you punch out down here, and then you have a new pad that you stick on here. These, these these bands, like you can order a new band, but these bands actually look fine. So um, I'll order all that once I get the springs pulled off. So I can't work on that anymore until I get the socket to get the, the drums off. So I'm going to turn my attention. I have two other things I can work on here. The first is cleaning out these compartments, which I'll probably do first. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and dump some diesel in here and swish it around for a while and then drain it out. First I'm going to grab all the tools I dropped down here when I was taking the stuff out. But we'll clean all this whole section out, get all the gasket material off. There's a lot of sludge on the bottom. So the, this, this is gear oil. This is either from leaking from <clears throat> the transmission out or from the final drives out. Um, but uh, the cat manual recommends opening up the drain plugs every 50 hours for this kind of thing. So uh, I got the drain plugs back in. I'm gonna go ahead and dump some diesel in and then we'll kind of slosh it around and hopefully clean up some of this mess. Okay. 
And I'll get a brush in here in a sec, but I'm just gonna kinda break up some of this big stuff here. There's some thick sludge down here. Oh my goodness. So this is kind of a long, boring process, as I'm sure you're aware. But, it should probably happen. Okay, I got the gas gasket surface cleaned off here pretty good. And then I have degreaser and the diesel just kind of soaking on all this stuff. So I'll come back in tomorrow, clean it up. As I was scraping around here, I am 99% sure that the way water got in here is it was the covers over these uh, this brake adjustment thing here. So these covers do not look stock. They're not painted and they are just um, pitted and rusted like crazy. And they were RTV down and over here especially, this is RTV with, with rust metal mixed in. So easily water could have been pouring in here and then just getting, cause it's, it's all one case. This whole thing is linked. It's one big unit. It goes underneath uh, where the ring gear goes and comes out. So uh, that's definitely how that's definitely how water was getting in. So I'm probably gonna I'll see if I can just you know completely sand these smooth and then paint them and put them reuse them because they are the right size. They're just not painted for some reason, and uh, that'll hopefully fix that. I did get a new gear in for the transmission. So let's take a look at that. I got it from a company called uh, Big Iron LLC. The guy actually answers his emails and phone calls, so uh, I was happy about that. But this thing looks pretty much brand new. The teeth all look excellent. And uh, let me zoom out a little bit so maybe you can see better. It just it just has some coating on it that needs to be cleaned off. But this this gear is very very good shape. Two hundred dollars. You know, when I rebuilt the, uh, the T56, when I swapped in the, uh, the V8 into the, the Z there, I think it was $150 for a new gear. So $200 is a bargain, especially one in that good of shape. Over on this side, we got a couple things we need to do. We need to change the clutch. Just because we're here, we might as well change it. And I don't know how old it is. And these clutches are actually not expensive. I was, that's like, I think it was 70, 80 bucks for a new clutch. It's like, why not? I need to figure out what's going on with the spring here. And then I need to replace this gear, which I already have that new gear. Um, I ordered the seal. There's a seal on this shaft, obviously, which I ordered. There's a gasket, which I can just make. Uh, so I think I have all the parts. I was reading online that apparently there's a lot of different versions of these, these two plates over around the clutch. And they are, some of them are prone to cracking. So I'm going to see which casting numbers I have, compare that to the website. And then, and then I'll just look at these very carefully, make sure I don't have any cracks on them. Obviously, if there's a crack, you have to replace it. Um, if there's a crack on one plate and it's an old casting, then you have to replace both plates with a new one because you can't find the old ones anymore. That's, that's kind of the gist I got. Oh, lost a bolt. Okay, so there's a uh, nut right here, which this is like soldered to. Um, and then there's a nut at the bottom. I can't fit this in at the bottom, but I can get a socket up through that drain hole up onto it. It's one five sixteenths. So hopefully I can get this guy off of the cheater bar without rounding it. It is not moving. So I just need to go to the store now and pick up a box wrench for this guy. Well, I apologize in advance. This is probably going to be a kind of a short video. I was out camping a lot of this week and, uh, and I kind of ran out of tools and parts. I think next week it's going to start going really fast though, because I have a lot of parts coming very soon and uh, I can start putting stuff back together, especially the transmission and the drive. But uh, in, in the meantime, I really need to get going on this engine. I've kind of shown that 90% of the problems with this tractor are with the engine. That's probably why it was parked in the first place. So we need to get going on it and figuring out if we can find a new one or if we just need to start looking at repairing it. So first step is I'm gonna come in here with some micrometers. I'm gonna measure all the journals on the crank. 
I'll do a measurement here, here, and then 90 degree degrees over here and here to check for the Ovaltine. And, uh, and uh, I'll share that. I'll put that up as like maybe a community post, like in a spreadsheet, or uh, I could probably do it on Instagram too for the, the hip millennials if they're into that kind of thing. So I'll get going on that within the next day or so. I'll have that out. And then I'll also come in and measure the, uh, the, the rods and, and all that kind of stuff, see what I can use. Other thing is over here on this board, I've kind of started tracking how much I've been paying for this. And I'll definitely be sharing this throughout the project just so you can see. And it also helps me track what I need to order and, uh, and how much I've been paying for stuff. So over here we have, you know, I have 1500 for the dozer, 400 to get it here. This gear I already bought, I already bought the front seal. Um, I'm gonna order this probably tomorrow. And then once I get, I ordered this clutch tool so once I get that in, then I'll be ordering, the, uh, I need to find out if I have to replace anything else before I order the rest of that stuff. So I, this is all, I found this at, uh, was it General Gear in Idaho? It's also under like tractorparts.com or .net. They have all this stuff and they have for the steering clutches, they have uh, a, a complete replacement using bimetal. And then you have to order a couple more metal discs. They sell the springs, they sell all the stuff. So that's all in stock. The seals, like this seal and that seal I just found on eBay. The gear I found on, uh, what was that, Big Iron, that website. Clutch disc was also on the same site as the General Gear one. So yeah, so far I haven't had any problem finding parts. Um, I looked a little bit online for that, that uh, recoil spring and I haven't found that yet, but I, I'm sure I can find that eventually. So with all that said, like I said, sorry about the short video, but you know, it's uh, just the way it is, something better than nothing. And I'll be back real soon, and it's gonna get, hopefully get exciting here pretty quick, because like I said, there's a lot of parts coming in, and uh, there'll be a lot to do here. So stay tuned, and thanks for watching, guys. Appreciate it.